Hey all, hope you guys are doing well. We are at six days postpartum. Um, She's six days old. Six days old, almost one week old. And uh, yeah. Something happened. Something happened. As you could maybe tell, I'm back in the hospital. Back in the hospital. Yeah, so um, one of the things that they were checking all along was that Sasha had kind of borderline uh, high blood pressure and they just said, hey, keep monitoring it, keep monitoring it, keep watching. And then before they discharged us from the postpartum, uh, they were checking again. And they were just like, yeah, so elevated, but just keep watching it. And if it goes up or shoots up and you get, you experience like, you know, nausea or, you know, blurred vision, headache. Like, yeah, headache or pain on like your right side. Yeah, then call the emergency like, or call 911 immediately I guess or call the OB immediately and because that that could be a risk of preeclampsia and um, one of our family friends nope. one our of aunt. our, our aunts <laughs> got us a blood pressure monitor yeah one that's better than the one we had and so we used it and then we're like okay it's pretty high whatever we're you know not have we don't have enough sleep we're just worried about the baby and then today she texted to check in. She's like, how's your blood pressure? And then we told her, oh yeah, by the way, she's a nurse. Um, and we told her and she was like, please call your OB or your OB clinic right away. We're like, okay. So then we called and then um, the, the nurse on the on call called us back and was like, what's going on? So I told her and she's like, yeah, go to the ER. So we ended up going to, Gordon and I ended up going to the ER while the baby stayed at home with my mom. Uh, we went to the ER at the location that's closest to our house, so it's different from where we gave birth. And we were there for a while. Everybody was freaking out about my blood, high red blood pressure. It was like in the one seventies, and you want it less than one forty. Um, and then they kept asking if I had the other symptoms, and I was like, no. But they were saying like, you know, you uh, need to look out for postpartum preeclampsia. It's pretty common, I guess, or like it's not. I don't know. It's it's something that can be expected to happen uh, to like what was it six weeks after yeah. birth or something after giving birth, and so they did that. They gave me meds. Uh, my blood pressure went down a little bit, and then it shot back up. And then they're like, "Yeah, we're gonna admit you until Monday or Tuesday for monitoring, but since you just gave birth, we'll put you in the postpartum wing, and then your husband can go get the baby." So that's why they're here. Yep. Um, so they had me, I forgot the name of the meds, so we'll put that in the description once we figure it out. But right now I'm on a magnesium sulfate drip to help with, um, other symptoms basically. And the way that the OB on call here said was like to prevent seizures. So I told our aunt, the one that texted us, and she's like, yeah, that's why I wanted you to go to the OB right away because you can have seizures. I was like, oh. So yeah. If they tell you to monitor your blood pressure, please do. Um, I know, like, we're so concerned about the baby that we forgot to take care of ourselves, but I'm glad that our aunt checked in on us, because if not, we would have just stayed home and been like, okay, whatever, we're not experiencing the other symptoms, it's fine. Yep, but, but basically what we noticed when monitoring her blood pressure is, like, it wasn't getting any better, it was actually getting worse. Um, Which is what our OB, our... Yeah, our OB expected, which is why we were going to get induced anyway. So I'm glad that she came before the induction and before all of this has happened. Yep, yeah, exactly. So anyways, the, uh, yeah, so the on-call OB that was uh, talking to us in the ER was basically like, yeah, I'm so sorry you guys have to go through this. Um, but basically what they're going to do is we're going to keep you in the postpartum clinic for 48 hours uh, minimum. And we're just going to monitor your blood pressure. We're going to give you some meds. And we're basically going to reduce your blood pressure to a level where your body can then kind of manage it on its own. Mm -hmm. And she says, I'll probably be on meds for like 10 days or something. 10 to, yeah, 10, 10 to, to 20, 20 days. And it'll be an oral medication. And she says, uh, basically, by the six week mark, we should be completely off meds. Uh, and, and, and we'll be fine. Um, but basically, yeah, it's good that you guys came in. There's been like a huge spike in preeclampsia cases lately with mm -hmm. a lot of the women giving uh, birth like a postpartum preeclampsia. So she's like not surprised at all. 
the hospital or so the e emergency room that we did go to is um is within the same uh family as it's like the same it's the same hospital same just hospital a just a different location so they had all of sasha's information and then actually this uh the er on call ob that we talked to actually knew one of the ob's at the um hospital where we gave birth and so she was just like um in sync with that so that was cool that you know we're in that same network and every everybody has all of our information so it's easy to do you know um anyway so yeah, yeah. and right now i'm on the like they're limiting how much liquid i can have so that's another thing they're paying attention to yep um but yeah we got in here um the postpartum nurses are super nice really really wonderful everybody's very friendly here um the hospital that okay so <laughs> one of the things the uh, ob uh, at the er was like hey i saw you guys go to the other location why didn't why are you guys here and she was kind of confused and we told her oh it's because this is the closest place to our house so we, we came here because it was the closest spot and she's like okay yeah i understand totally and then um and then i think the postpartum nurse was telling sash like oh you, you're gonna be kind of spoiled because you guys went to the other location which the is like <laughs> it's like a brand new hospital yeah. there so everything is really nice and they're like yeah sorry our facilities are not as that's nice. So I'll give you guys um, a quick, uh, I guess I can give them a quick walk around. I, I don't think so. Oh, okay, okay, never mind. I can't do that. But basically... Um, it's not as updated and modern. It's like an older... Yeah, it's like definitely older. Um, I mean, there's a there's an actual like a bed for the guest rather than at the previous hospital where it's like a fold out bed couch, uh, which is nice. There is no um, no AC control or uh, uh, HVAC control, so we can't set the room temperature. Yeah, we have a fan. We just have a fan. We've got a TV, but it's pretty small. Uh, whereas the other one is like a big TV kind of thing. And uh, yeah, just in general, things are a Way little, different. Bit, little bit different, yeah. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'm kind of bummed. I yeah. Like the other yeah. Sasha's like, oh man, the other one has such nice facilities, which is true. And it's... everybody knows us, and our pediatricians upstairs. Yeah. Our OBs upstairs. upstairs. Everybody's there, and so um, I guess that was our bad for not going to that well, location. Because we didn't think anything was wrong. Because we yeah. didn't experience the rest of the symptoms. We didn't know we were gonna get admitted. Yeah, we thought we would just go in. They get would give us give, give <laughs> some meds, get a prescription, yeah. and then they would t send you home and say, "Hey, go visit your OB on Monday." But no, they were like, "No, you are going into the hospital today." <laughs> so yeah, anyways, uh, not fun. Um, we're here with the baby. Uh, one thing about bringing the baby in is that I guess we're considered like a guest almost, like yeah. a visitor. So they'll give us like baby stuff and they'll help us store the baby formula or baby milk and all that kind of stuff. But um, they're saying if Gordon leaves the room, he has to take the baby with him. Yeah, because of, like, they're not the authorized yeah, to do anything with the baby. Yeah, she's not a patient. I'm, I'm the only one right now. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then I, I guess what else? Yeah. So we're kind of just visiting, I guess, for staying. Yeah. Brought right a bunch now, of clothes. The last. Um, BP check, I'm in the 140s, so it's yep. definitely going down from 170. Yeah, yep. getting better. Yep. Yeah, we, we, I think our high was like 174 over like 110 or something crazy like that. And basically the, uh, the emergency room OB was like, yeah, if you get into like the 200s, then that's like really bad. Like, so fortunately we're not, we were not at that point yet, but she was like, yeah, good thing you guys came in when you did, because, like, yeah, you you definitely have pre Uh which sucks. Well, I feel like they yeah. didn't say that, but they're saying, like, okay. it, it's you're super high risk for development. Okay, okay, well, yeah. okay, I guess, yeah. Uh, what else? That's all. Can she say hi? All right. Can I say hi? She's Can I say hi? Hey, buddy. Say hi, hey, friends. Buddy. Hi. Hey, friends. <laughs> Can't believe she's gonna be a week old tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, I think, I guess that's all we have for an update right now. Yeah. We've just been adjusting. Yep, how do you feel right now? I feel fine. I, like, the only difference I notice is my heart isn't palpitating as fast or as frequently. Aside from that, everything seems the same. Yeah, your feet are not as swollen. But that's good. Her feet before, oh my goodness, it was like, it was like maybe 
30% bigger all around, just swollen up. Her calves were so tight, everything was so tight, and then I was mas trying to massage them and stuff like that, which kind of helped, but her, her swelling went down, which is awesome, so I'm, I'm hoping that's a good sign. Yeah. Um, what else? That's all, really. Um, yeah. Um, okay, a couple updates for the dads out there and those partners that are out there supporting. You know, stay in there, stay strong. Um, I've been trying to kind of support um, in my part uh, because I don't, ha I, I can't produce breast milk, so I'm somewhat, you know, I, I can't help with the feeding part, but I am working on, you know, doing the other things. So, like, I do all the diaper changes. Um, I take care of all the blowouts. Oh, by the way, make sure you check the elastic on. We had two blowouts today, and it was the first two blowouts we had, pretty much. One of them is because one of the diapers that we got, it was a Pampers diaper, it didn't have the elastic band on the side. And at the time, I didn't really think it was that big of a deal because we got the diapers from somebody else. I was like, oh yeah, it's probably, that's just how it is. But no, it was literally missing the elastic band, so we had a blowout. And then we just had another blowout while I was changing uh, baby O. Uh, she decided to, uh, <laughs> she decided to poop while I was changing her, and then it kind of got over the bassinet and stuff, so I had to clean that. Um, but now it's all good. So. Oh yeah, I yeah. guess another update. Breast milk came in. Yep. Um, yeah. So we've been doing uh, whenever it's time to feed. He changes her diaper, gives her to me. She stimulates the nipple drinks as much as she can and then we go to the formula we also switched from the enfamil to the happy baby organics yeah formula so that finally arrived yep um it seems to be going well yep yeah but yeah breast milk came in today yeah yeah um and then what else so baby has been kind of nocturnal almost like her schedule's flipped so she will sleep a lot during the day at night she will just eat like not like crazy like she's eating like three almost three ounces in a feeding and that's like every two and a half hours she's just eating so much right now and uh we're just we're just giving it to her she's pooping a lot peeing a lot so we're doing a lot of diaper changes she's getting better with diaper changes she's a, she's not as fussy yep but she still screams bloody murder but sometimes when she's calm she doesn't even make a sound which is great yep um, heads up on the equipment that we're using. So for the bottles, we are using the MAM, M-A-M bottles. Um, those so far have seemed to be pretty good. It is kind of a pain in the butt cleaning um, bottles in general, but the MAMs are nice because you can take them all apart and it's really easy to clean. Um, but the thing that does suck is I've been uh, trying to sterilize the bottles with our steam sterilizer, our electric sterilizer, whenever I can. But the thing is, it takes so long for baby bottles to dry. So just heads up for those of you that are playing out your registry and you guys are thinking about maybe going with a, a bottle or steam, like a steam sterilizer for bottles, get the one that also has a built-in dryer mode, like an electric dryer. So basically you would put the bottle in after it's clean, it would sterilize it with the steam and then it would dry it with heat. And that that is uh, so much, uh, so, so that would be so helpful because Right now, we just have a drying rack and it takes hours to dry and it doesn't even dry all the way. So I basically have to use like a paper towel, which is like not sterile anymore to dry it, to try to dry it as best I can, um, which kind of sucks. So if you are planning to get a steam sterilizer, get one that has the electric heater function too, that'll automatically dry the bottles because uh, that'll save you so much time. Um, yeah, and then what else? Um, even though she weighs almost eight pounds, like when she was born, Yeah. Uh, she still doesn't fit newborn clothes. They're still too big on her. Yep. So that's interesting because people keep saying like, oh, she's mu she must be a big baby, eight pounds. And like, no, she's pretty tiny. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah. What else? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, brief updates for now. Still need to tell you guys about the birth story because that was crazy. Oh, yeah. One part that we forgot to mention as to why it was an emergency C-section. Um was because the baby's heart rate dropped to the 70s like twice and that was super scary yeah super scary um yeah anyways hope you guys are all doing well uh, wishing you guys all the best and best of luck and um let us know if you have any questions please also just keep us posted on your journeys 
and um, you know we love hearing from all of you guys um, wish you guys success and best of luck Till next time. Bye, baby. Bye, guys. Say bye, baby-o. It worked hard.